Hey folks, I am Ryan Goodman and you are listening to the Agriculture Proud Podcast. Join the conversation and find all my content at agricultureproud.com. Hello and welcome to episode six of the Agriculture Proud Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Goodman, coming at you from Helena, Montana, where April is uh, finally bringing around some showers and some warmer temps and uh, some good blizzard snow to parts of the state. But that's just how it goes. Uh, can't wait for our long summer days. They're not too far off. But hey, uh, before I forget, uh, be sure to catch me online and all my content at agricultureproud.com. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as agproudryan and on Facebook as I am Agriculture Proud. And I want to give a big thanks to all those of you who have just subscribed uh, to the Agriculture Proud podcast, whether it be on iTunes, Stitcher, your favorite podcast platform. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to look it up, the Agriculture Proud podcast. Well, this year I'm hooking up with Bear Animal Health and part of their blogger program to bring you some different perspectives and some expert advice um, on topics that are impacting cattle and livestock farmers and ranchers today. And on today's podcast, I'm talking to a veterinarian, Dr. Jim Little. He's a technical services veterinarian with Bear Animal Health based in Lexington, Kentucky, and much like myself, attended the University of Tennessee, so excited to uh, speak with someone uh, who's familiar with the volunteer state. Uh, Dr. Little and I are going to be talking about bovine respiratory disease, or BRD. This is something that uh, has a billion dollar impact annually on the cattle business, uh, farmers and ranchers, and, and a lot of money that goes into this. So uh, a lot of research, and Bear is doing some innovative things to come up with uh, education on the topic of prevention of BRD and uh, some new tools for treatment uh, for farmers and ranchers. And so excited to talk a little bit about that. And uh, we're going to be asking Dr. Little about the impact that BRD may have have on our beef supply at the retail markets uh, for those of you who are not directly involved with raising cattle, um, but also for the cattle producers, we're going to talk a little bit about those prevention and treatment tools. And I think that Dr. Little brings a good perspective to this. Uh, usually when we think about veterinarians, we think about those who are treating our dogs or cats or cattle or horses on field calls. Um, but another side of veterinary services uh, community is uh, those who are working to help ensure that quality products are brought to the shelf and helping to ensure that we know how to use those products correctly. So uh, interesting to talk a little bit about uh, that side of the veterinary business as well. So uh, stay tuned after the interview. Uh, we'll have some notes from Dr. Little's conversation, some links where you can find more information. And as always, you can find all of the content and show notes at agricultureproud.com slash podcast. <laughs> All right, and I'm back on the podcast today with uh, Dr. Jim Little. He's a senior techni technical veterinarian with Bear Animal Health, and uh, welcome to the show today, Dr. Little. Thank you, Ryan. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm talking about BRD, uh, which is definitely a big issue uh, in the cattle business and, and cattle health world, but, uh, you know, to kind of start us off, would you give us a little bit of background and how, uh, you know, what is your role in the business and the industry, and, and how did you come about becoming a veterinarian? Well, if we go way back, um, you know, growing up, a lot of people, I think, have this uh, vision of I want to become a veterinarian when I grow up. That's kind of a lifelong dream for them. I don't, I can't say really that that's the way it happened for me. I uh, always had a love for agriculture, um, had uh, some exposure to farm animals growing up. Uh, my family had a few cows and whatnot, and my extended family were more into row crops. But uh, I didn't grow up necessarily with that vision of, of, uh, of a dream to become a veterinarian. But as I progressed through school and kept that focus on agriculture and ultimately animal agriculture, it seemed to me like the role as a veterinarian or the career as a veterinarian sort of fell into place. And it seemed like a logical uh, fit for me um, as far as a career path or plan went. Um, I'll say coming out of veterinary school, I, I had all intentions and ultimately did go into large animal practice, both equine and, and beef cattle practice. And I really envisioned myself doing nothing but private practice work. And I think that's the majority of folks as they go into vet school anyway and come out, that's, that's what they ultimately intend to do. So being an industry veterinarian was not something that was readily on top of my mind or really even 
realized it was an option for veterinarians as far as a career path and career choice uh, uh, was. But uh, after years in, in private practice, I, I came upon an opportunity to get into industry and ultimately saw the uh, you know the challenges of that potential career type and career move and uh, how potentially rewarding it could be, uh, exposure that it gives me to uh, other practitioners in other parts of the country uh, is really a, a great aspect of the job, and those things really lured me away from practice and ultimately allowed me to end up in uh, industry as a technical service veterinarian. And in that particular role, I, I'd support uh, our products, in this case bears, uh, farm animal products, um, uh, with technical support both to our sales ta staff and also to our customers. So if, if there becomes a technical issue or technical question, uh, I'm one of the go-to people for that. And we do a lot of other functions as well, such as uh, we're involved with any sort of uh, adverse event that may happen with products, and we're involved with investigations of that. And we're also involved with field trials and, and various uh, research-type products. Uh, projects, I should say. So a lot of different aspects of the job, but ultimately uh, I like being out in the field, having contact with customers and seeing how we can help uh, their uh, livelihood, their production system, and as a veterinarian, their, their veterinary practices. So that may be more than you wanted to know, but that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell. No, that's that's pretty neat because usually when we think of of veterinarians, uh, we're thinking of, of folks who would make make farm calls or have have a clinic, um, something like that, and don't always uh, you know realize a lot of the work that goes in with veterinarians in uh, in the industry to try to get those products out and and make sure that they're the quality that we need in the industry out in the field. Right, and I think that's an important aspect of this particular job is to help ensure that we are providing quality products uh, that are functional in the field, efficacious, but also are safe products that ultimately that customer and that veterinarian or that producer can can have faith in and trust that uh, that they're going to do what they're supposed to do and, and aren't uh, apt to cause harm for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So, and and to kind of kind of switch gears a little bit and go into to our topic today um, of bovine respiratory disease, it's something that uh, growing up I had a, you know a family a stalker a cow calf operation and worked in the feedlots, and you can BRD is something that you know impacts a lot of producers and has for quite a while here in the cattle industry. Um, can can you give us just kind of a a little bit of an introduction and, or a description of what BRD is? and uh, how it impacts our business yeah you're you're exactly right it is a it is a uh, uh it has anyway a major impact on the on the beef industry and it can it can have an effect in many different aspects or uh time points along uh, a calf's life or an animal's lifespan uh and primarily it seems to be a problem in uh uh, wean calves uh, coming into a stalker operation or into a feeding operation seems to be the time point that we see it rear its head the most, but it, it does have a significant impact on the beef cattle industry as a whole. And I have some figures or a reference that says it costs the cattle industry a billion dollars annually, and that would include costs of things like medication, but also lost performance, uh, cost of the animal itself, because BRD certainly can be not only uh, illness-causing, but it can be deadly as well. So a lot of different aspects where it costs that cattle industry, but it's it's the number one uh, disease that impacts uh, the, the cattle industry in a negative way. Yeah, it's, that's, uh, that's a big impact, a billion-dollar cost, uh, definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. So. So for our audiences listening that uh, may not be beef producers, beef cattle producers, but maybe beef consumers, um, does this have any impact on our end product? Well, I think the biggest uh, impact it would have on the end product would be just, uh, it starts with our ability to produce that end product efficiently. 
So if we're we're having cattle that suffer from from BRD, ultimately again the performance isn't as well, the efficiency of performance isn't there, and ultimately that drives up our cost of production, which uh, in, in my mind I could see ultimately ending up into a rise in the cost of that end product. But you know BRD does not. Uh, directly I think affects the quality of that product that's sitting in the in the grocer's shelf or in that that retail uh, marketplace but it ultimately has a huge impact on the efficiency in which we can get that product to market yeah which has become a big uh, a, a kind of a big deal and in, in being efficient and kind of in the conversations of being sustainable um, and beef being a being an efficient source of protein to be able to consume and to a, a glowing growing global population, so that's pretty important. But it's it's good to know and, and safe to say that it doesn't affect the food safety uh, aspect of our beef. That's correct. I, I don't I don't think it affects that food safety issue at all. But as the as the world's population continues to grow and there's increased demand for for protein or protein source and beef is certainly uh, one of those proteins that we hope to to fill that need with. There's going to be ever increasing pressure uh, on our producers to produce more uh, beef and ultimately produce it. Do we have to produce it more efficiently? So uh, BRD potentially has a, a huge impact not only today but going forward it could be even more. Oh, okay. That's for sure. So what are some tools available out there that we can use um, as cattle producers to treat BRD or to prevent it from uh, from affecting our cattle? Yeah, ideally prevention is, is the way to go on not only BRD but most uh, disease processes. So if we can prevent it, we're, we're miles ahead. Typically what we do to prevent BRD, or maybe I should back up and just kind of define BRD in case there are those listeners that may not uh, understand that acronym, but BRD stands for bovine respiratory disease. So typically it, it begins with a, with a stressful situation for that animal, whether that be the weaning of the animal or potentially transport, that sort of thing. And that stress ultimately can um, make the animal more susceptible to uh, a viral infection. Those viral infections could be a virus such as uh, BRD, I'm I'm sorry, excuse me, IBR, BVD, PI3, BRSD. Those are some of the the acronyms for viruses that that many people have have most likely heard of before. But those viral uh, components then can come on into that into that animal, causing a viral portion of, of the respiratory infection. And then ultimately, we get a bacterial component of uh, BRD or bovine respiratory disease. And it's the bacterial involvement that typically ends up uh, causing damage and not only the, just the infection itself, but the inflammation associated with the infection results in damage to the lung tissue of the animal. And once that lung tissue is damaged or scarred in, uh, it doesn't return to function. And this, that, that animal may be affected from that point forward uh, as far as having a decreased lung capacity. And we know that when animals uh, have that decreased lung capacity or lung uh, damage, they don't perform as well, and that leads to at least part of the explanation of that uh, decrease in efficiency in production that we alluded to earlier. So that, that's, that's kind of an overview of the BRD process itself. What we typically use to prevent BRD would be vaccines. Uh, vaccines are products that, uh, that contain antigens for some of those common viral pathogens and also a common bacterial pathogen. Uh, specifically Mannheimia hemolytica. So those vaccines would be administered to an animal uh, in uh, in an effort to target the acquired section or segment of the immune system to respond by making antibodies against those specific pathogens so that if that calf then um, is exposed to those uh, those pathogens in a real-world situation, then it has a... A, an antibody level that can help fight that uh, that infection. 
And that's that's our really our mainstay of prevention. We also do things from a husbandry standpoint to try and uh, minimize those stressful situations. So things like preconditioning calves uh, before they are weaned, getting them used to eating uh, from a feed bunk, uh, just getting them used to being away from the mother. Uh, anything we can do to ease that transition from being a calf at a cow side to being a weaned uh, feeder type calf and ultimately decreasing that stress, anything we can do to do that would ultimately help uh, ease that transition and, and help prevent some of that uh, stress that leads to the BRD situation. Yeah, no, it's really good to to understand how the how these diseases work to kind of go back and define what it is so that uh, when we're out in the field, we can identify when to call a vet or how to prevent um, some of these things. So yeah, the husbandry, proper vaccination program, or sometimes some things that we take for granted, but uh, it can definitely help help some of the situations that we may run into down the road. Right. Um, so for for treatment, uh, so when I was in uh, in San Diego earlier this year, I kind of visited with some of the bear folks and yourself, and and uh, bears come out with a couple of new new products that are new to to the BRD. Uh, treatment line. Um, want to briefly kind of touch on some of those? Yeah, we uh, uh, we are focusing on our strong points from Bayer's perspective, and, and those strong points really include BRD, bovine respiratory disease, and also our line of insecticides that uh, help uh, help producers control insecticides, which again ultimately can go into the efficiency of their production system. So if we get back to BRD, uh, uh, our typical treatment uh, for BRD has, has really relied upon antibiotics in order to treat specifically the bacterial component of that respiratory infection. And those have been a mainstay for, for you know, many years as far as the treatment regimen goes. And I think they'll continue to be uh, going forward, a, a major component of our treatment regimen, although we need to be sure, as many people talk about, and it's, it's a very good point to make, that we need to be sure to use those antimicrobials very judiciously. In other words, we need to make sure that we're using them in appropriate cases, in the appropriate way, appropriate dosages uh, for the appropriate diagnosis, et cetera, so that we don't overuse those, those tools, uh, that tool of an antibiotic. But at Bayer, we've had uh, uh, one of the major antibiotics on the market is, is Batril 100. Uh, that particular product's been a mainstay of ours and, again, will continue to be a, uh, one of those that we, uh, we keep as a mainstay of our, our product line. And that is an antibiotic that treats, again, the bacterial component of BRD. We're also uh, anxious to add to our portfolio as far as other antimicrobials go. And then we are really excited to introduce a, a new kind of innovative type technology for the treatment of BRD that's a non-antibiotic option uh, for treatment of BRD. It's not a, an antibiotic. It's not a vaccine either. It's an immun immunostimulant. The name of the product is called Zelnate, and it, it's a completely different way of looking at treating BRD. It helps really stimulate the calf's immune system and specifically the innate portion of the immune system to be able to help fight that infection off. And really what we're doing when we're treating uh, BRD, whether it be with antibiotics or with Zelnate, is we're trying to help the calf's immune system because ultimately it's that immune system that clears the infection. The antibiotic can help keep the bacterial population under control, or Zelnate in this case can help stimulate the calf's immune system uh, itself and specifically the innate portion, but ultimately it's that immune system that clears the infection. But uh, so that that kind of a, is a good summary or way to look at treatment, I think, of BRD. Yeah, no, and it's good to see uh, good to see some new innovation coming um, to to treating this disease that we we've dealt with for quite some time. So it's exciting to see that that rolling out to the industry. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so to kind of kind of wrap things up here a little bit. I wanted to ask, you know, kind of as, an, as a veterinarian that's worked in the industry for a few years and, and using your experience, what advice would you have for, for younger generations looking to become more involved in agriculture today? 
Well, I think first and foremost, uh, if you have a, a, a passion for agriculture, that is your interest. Uh, let no one slow you down. That agriculture is a very evolving field, but really the impact that agriculture has on the world as a whole, you know, providing uh, food and fiber, uh, et cetera, for the, for the population. Uh, I don't know how much more of an essential role that an industry could have. So uh, if that is your passion, that is your, uh, your, uh, what excites you, go with it and, and just uh, push, push it as far as you can. Uh, that would be, uh, I think, my first and foremost suggestion. As far as veterinarians go, it just really just plays on to that initial thought that I had. Uh, you have such uh, an opportunity to impact not only, only individual producers and the animals that, that they raise and are part of their life, uh, but you have an impact, again, on, on, on the world as a whole and providing that safe, um, safe food supply. And ultimately, that that has to be a very rewarding career choice. Oh, for sure. And and I like that uh, passion uh, for agriculture. Something that I've uh, believed in for quite some time. So it, and definitely encourage other folks to pursue. Um, so final question: uh, Where can we go online to find a little bit more about uh, BRD or some of the tools that are coming out uh, with Bear and, and some of the knowledge that you're sharing and providing to other people? Well, we, we specifically have some websites that are available um, uh, for for reference. Um, one is called zelnate.com. That is uh, specifically give you information on the new immunostimulant, the non-antibiotic choice for treatment of, of BRD. Uh, also, bearlivestock.com has uh, is a great resource for certain uh, uh, bear products that are involved with the livestock segment. And then we also have another uh, website that's available that gives more information on the immune system and specifically on the innate portion of the immune system and how it works. And that is innateimmunity.com. Uh, innateimmunity.com, I believe, is the address for that particular website. And it has some really good uh, information and reading uh, about the immune system and, and, again, how it functions. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Jim Little. He's a senior technician veterinarian with uh, Bayer Animal Health. Thank you for joining us on the podcast this week. You're welcome, Ryan. Thank you for having me. Hey, well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Dr. Little from Bayer Animal Health. And uh, I want to thank the folks at Bayer for hooking me up. Uh, I don't get compensated or paid for, for sharing any of this information, but definitely appreciate them uh, helping me to make these connections and bring the information and insight from some of the industry experts uh, today on some of these important topics that are impacting cattle producers today and and BRD bovine respiratory disease. I know we got to talking a lot of acronyms and some technical language there, but that uh, has a huge impact on being able to raise cattle today. And so it's pretty important that we learn a little bit more about how to prevent uh, the disease from happening. But when it does. Uh, it's pretty cool to have some new innovation and more innovation on uh, on a disease and being able to treat it, even though it's been around for so long. Um, so a couple of those websites, Dr. Little mentioned, zelnate.com. Go, go look that up for some more information on some of those specific products. But a little bit wider view is bearlivestock.com. And if you want to get a little more technical, go to innateimmunity.bear.com uh, to look up some information there um, on BRD and related diseases that we're dealing with in cattle. And then finally, Dr. Little mentioned their uh, advice to those who are looking to get into agriculture or, or building our careers in ag. Uh, don't let uh, don't let anything slow you down from pursuing your passion. Uh, definitely appreciate that. And there for those vets, uh, you know, what a great opportunity as veterinarians to be able to impact not only farmers and ranchers and, and the animals that they're working with, but also have, have an influence on larger community as well around the world. So excited about that. Uh, as always, you can catch the show notes, agricultureproud.com slash podcast. And uh, I want to appreciate and thank you for uh, tuning in today. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app and uh, we'll see you on the next show. Thank you for tuning in.